we're back with Pastor Najem, and we're going to find out a little bit more about your journey and particularly what happened there after this great misunderstanding that happened around the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then you ended up going to Bible college. Maybe you can just share a little bit about that. Yeah, so, so my pastor, you know, the man that brought me to the knowledge of salvation, Eli Smalky, he was just a very visionary man. He started uh, this little Bible school, uh, an extension of life Bible college, the Foursquare. And uh, so I was the first student to join. It was a, we had maybe about 12 students from the Middle East, from different countries. Um, it was for two, two and a half years, the program, and graduated. And uh, from there, it was, um, at this time, I was really getting into this beautiful new life. Uh, growing in a spirit and, and, and knowledge, and uh, I became my, my pastor's right-hand man, helping him, doing so many evangelistic trips into, into Syria, Jordan, uh, with the news of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because it was very new to the Middle East, very new. And then we started having charismatic meetings in hotels. Now, would this <coughs> have been about the time of the full gospel businessmen? Uh, was developing some entrance into the Middle East? The only entrance that I knew of at that time for the full gospel was in Jordan. It did not uh, quite go into Lebanon at that time. Okay. Yeah, it didn't. Uh, but the first time I've heard that term during one of those trips with my pastor into Amman, Jordan. We went to one of those meetings there. It was in a businessman uh, office that he had. And so it, it's still going till today, that same man same office wow. very strong actually very strong so that's what was happening and we were having all kind of beautiful retreats and you see lebanon is is really an oasis in the middle east so people will come in the summer especially because it gets hot all over the middle east but lebanon lebanon stays nice and cool in the hills so we took advantage of that our church and we had uh, retreats in the mountains so people will come from Egypt, Syria, Jordan, you know, many places, Christians into our retreat, and we have a beautiful one week. I remember what, the first one, it was about $25 to go in for that week. I, I did not have the money, but my sister, and it's very, very interesting, we need to get her into this because for the next segment that we will talk, uh, she married an American citizen, and she gave me a cross, a chain, gold chain, and before she went to America. I sold that f so I could go to the retreat. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're having a great, great time, really, in, th in those retreats. And one of, in one of those retreats, I, I used to go to the airport to pick up the people that are coming from Egypt in a bus and take them to the mountain. I, I met this girl from Egypt that came in. Not, not a Christian, not saved. A lot of them, non-Christians came just for the, for the visit, for the tourist, uh, you know, kind of uh, in, in the meetings. And she was one of them, but she became my wife. Uh, we met and we, we um, uh, discussed a lot of things. Uh, she became Christian. She got saved during that retreat and later on, much later on, like six years later on, she became my wife. So things were really becoming so beautiful, so, so lovely, until one night, out of nowhere, no one was ready. We never knew anything about nothing. We just heard machine guns in the streets, wow. sounds of machine guns. Mm -hmm. and, and we were all so terrified. I mean, Beirut was so safe. We used to sleep with windows open, doors open. Never, we never had any issues. My friends were all Muslims. We grew up together. We ate together. We went out to the movies together. We never had any issue until one night. This is in 1973. It's, it's about two years after uh, my baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, civil war broke up all over Lebanon and destroyed the beauty of Lebanon the beauty of the culture, the beauty of the nature. I mean, it became horrible, horrifying. And my pastor, who was an American citizen, he had to leave his family. They all left, all the Americans left. 
Now, what year was this that this took place? This is 73 when it started. Okay. But it, okay. it started very little and it stopped. So it used to go for about a month and it stopped. Uh, and stopped. But until uh, late 74, early 75, when it broke up all over the country. And, and now they're using missiles, tanks, anything that you could, they could get their hands on. And what happened is... Can you just share uh, with us a little bit about who were the conflicting elements at that time? Was well, it, uh, of course, uh, everybody will have a different story. My, okay. my belief is this. Lebanon is the only country in the Middle East that the president is a Catholic. Okay. That's what the French uh, occupation, after we, we took our independence, they gave us our constitution. And the constitution that the French wrote for us demanded that the president, even till now, still a, a Catholic, a Maronite. The prime minister is Sunni, Muslim, and the head of the parliament is Shiite. So the whole uh, structure is built on, on religion and denominations. I see. Because it's the only country that is a Christian president, and all the others are Muslim, but Israel, Okay, our, 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 you know, neighbor. Yes. Right. So the Arabs nations, ever since the existence of Lebanon, really wanted to change it and, and get rid of the Christian president and put a Muslim president. That's what I believe the original issue is. Okay. But then because Lebanon was so free and, and um, meaning like everything was available, free religion, free speech, free, free, free press, free banking, so we had, it was a banking center of the Middle East, but it was the CIA center of the Middle East. It was the, it was the uh, you know, the traffic, the, 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 um, the uh, weapon, you know, the, uh, business of the Middle East. Everything, bad and good, was there. So it was very wide open. But then another huge issue came up when the Palestinians were kicked out from Palestine. Right. Okay. They came to Lebanon. And they started what's called the PLO, Palestinian Liberation Organization, Yasser Arafat. His headquarters became Beirut. They became a country within a country. They became an army within the country. So all this played. And then you have the leftist, which is the communist parties and all that. They all unite together, the Muslims, the leftists, the PLO, against the Christians in Lebanon. So it was a fight between them and the Christians. The Christians were not innocent either. You know, there, were, there, there was a lot of bad things that the, the Christians did. Uh, they all became very vicious. And a lot of kidnapping, a lot of slaughtering. Uh, I, I saw things, it's, it's horrifying. I saw people split in half, you know, in front of me. Yeah, and uh, at that time, something very interesting happened because there was no more, no more stores, no more, no more electricity, no more, no more war. But this is what, how important the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. Because the Spirit of the Lord will tell me where to go find water every mm -hmm. day to bring gallons of water to my family. Mm -hmm. And there was this well in the heart of the city. We used to go there, but there was a sniper that would shoot at the well. So we counted the minutes between every, sh every shot. You know, and I'll pray, Lord, okay, when do I run to get the water and wait? Wow. And, and I did that. Yeah, wow. yeah. Until what happened is um, one of my friends, we were together that night. I came home. His mother called me. Where is Habib? His name is Habib. I said, I came home. He went home. He goes, no, he didn't come home. Well, for 10 days, he didn't come home. 10 days later, they sent them to us seven, eight pieces. They cut. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And, wow. Um, and this was a close friend of yours. Very close friend. Was, was one of, you know, we were hanging out together. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Happened a lot. I lost a lot of cousins, friends like that. Mm -hmm. A terrible, terrible time. Terrible time. And um, then, then I was sitting on a balcony one time of my apartment. I said, Lord, uh, we need, I need to do something for my family. We need money. We need, we need food, you know. And God gave me an idea. I'm looking at this piece of land that was, became a, the dump of the area for, because there was no more trash collectors. He goes, go down there and clean it up. I said, okay. I start cleaning. I said, well, why am I cleaning this? He goes, 
you're going to start a little falafel stand right there. So I went to an old man that used to have a falafel store. I asked him for a recipe. <laughs> and, and we got the recipe, and me and my mother and my brothers and a couple of kids from the neighborhood, uh, with, with no electricity, no, I just put a couple two-by-fours with a little you know, roof. I right. started the stand and started selling falafel. I made more money selling falafel in that stand that I was making from that three jobs that I used to have. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were an entrepreneur, I guess. Entrepreneur right there, right from the yeah, beginning. But right. there was a reason why God was, he was preparing me to make enough money to leave Lebanon. Okay. Because I did not know he knew what's going to happen. The day came when they came and took me from who, my house. Who came and took the you? The PLO. The PLO. Palestinian Liberation Organization. And so they took me just like they took everybody else, a Christian. Because now we used to have about 10 to 15,000 nominal traditional Christians in this neighborhood. This, this time that I went, there's only 100 people from the 15,000. So they came and took me. And we all know, everybody knows, when they take you, you don't come back. You know, the whole neighborhood came down from their houses to the streets. There was about maybe a thousand people still tried to protect me, but, but they had machine guns and, and my neighbors, they had nothing. Yeah. So they start shooting in the air, you know, over the people's heads for the people to leave. My mother, my poor mother, she, she grabbed the Jeep that I'm in and she won't let go. They hit her with a, with a, with a, with a rifle on her, in her shoulders, but she still would not let go. So I pulled her to go with me. So we went there and, and, and uh, walked into this office. There was a lot of commotions, a lot of people, you know, w wounded and weapons and, and the man in charge sitting behind the desk and he was swearing and talking on the telephone. And, and I walk in there and he looks at me and I said to him, don't you touch me. If you touch me, it will not go well with you. He goes, what do you mean? I said, I'm a man of God. He looked at me like this. He goes, get out of my sight, leave right now. Wow, just like, just like that. Just like that. Wow, you I know love... what? We're, <laughs> we're going to come back and we're going to hear more about this story yeah. because, I mean, this is, this is really like out of the book of Acts, Amen. you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so you just hang with us and, uh, and we're going to take a little break and we'll come right back. <laughs> 